Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Key Facts, Trigonometric Functions, a Unit Circle. Question 9, the sine of 30 degrees and the cosine of 30 degrees. To order this complete CRAM session, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com and be sure to spread the word to your friends and classmates who also need to review. They can also inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com for pricing and ordering instructions. Now this particular problem is loaded with tons of great background information, so let's cram through it together. Review question nine. In the unit circle shown in the accompanying diagram, what are the coordinates of X and Y? Is it going to be one? negative radical 3 over 2 and negative 1 over 2? Is it going to be 2, negative 1 over 2 and negative radical 3 over 2? Is it going to be 3, negative 30 and negative 210? Or is it going to be 4, negative radical 2 over 2 and negative radical 2 over 2? All right, so definitely press pause at this time and take a moment to organize your solution, okay? Excuse the sound of lawnmowers in the back. It adds a little, I don't know, variety anyway. All right, let's attack this together. Um, I'm going to do a lot of asides and give you a lot of background information. So the first thing you need to note about a unit circle is that its radius is going to be um, one. That's where it gets its no more unit because the radius is one unit on the respective Cartesian coordinate plane that the unit circle is drawn on. So this is one unit this is one unit as well as this radius. This is one unit as well. And that comes in very handy because um, we're going to soon realize that this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Okay? If you were to picture it as such, and the radius is one, okay? All right, so let's continue in our line of reasoning. Um, this angle here is in standard position. And what I mean by that um, is that the vertex is located at the origin and one ray is sitting on the x-axis. The ray on the x-axis is called the initial side and the other ray, the, the radius here, that um, intersects the unit circle the ray that intersects the unit circle forms the radius as well as um, the hypotenuse of this particular right triangle. Okay, let's just indicate that this is a right triangle. Alrighty then. And so, um, because this is in standard position, we can reason that um, the terminal side well, obviously, it passes through the unit circle, and um, we then have that the cosine of theta, where is going to be equivalent to x, and the sine of theta is going to be equivalent to y. And how is this such, you may ask? And remember, here we're given our theta, so we don't have to guess. Theta is 30 degrees. Well, if you recall, the cosine of theta or the cosine of any angle um, formed on a Cartesian coordinate plane is going to be equivalent to its x-coordinate divided by the radius. But since our radius is 1, we don't need to express this as a fraction. We can just simply express it as the cosine of theta as well as the sine. The sine of theta is basically equivalent to the y-coordinate, the vertical, divided by r, or the radius, or the hypotenuse, 
And here are our hypotenuse is 1 because we're dealing with the unit circles. So it can just simply be expressed as the sine of theta. And here goes um, this concept expressed right side up in quadrant 1. Remember, you have to remember quadrant 1 is bounded by 0 degrees and 90 degrees, right? So all the angles or thetas that occur in this quadrant are going to be acute. So here that we, we see that um, the sine of theta is going to be x over r, okay, because remember, I mean the cosine, remember it's adjacent over hypotenuse. It just so happens that our adjacent measurement over our hypotenuse happens to be an x-coordinate and um, the measure of a ray, okay? And for the sine of this particular angle theta, we have the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. It just so happens that our opposite side also happens to coincide with the y-coordinate. And again, our hypotenuse is the ray formed um, by the terminal side, okay? All right, and notice here, something special here, theta is just theta. So we can just do the sine of theta, cosine of theta here. It's really simple. This angle is in standard position because the initial side is on the x-axis and the terminal side, the vertex is at the origin and the terminal side, you know, ends somewhere about in quadrant one. So theta here is also called our reference angle. And so measuring trigonometric functions in quadrant one is really simple, but then um, things get a little bit trickier when you go to quadrants two, three, and four. And let's just take one more side before we solve this problem so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Here we see that our theta, uh, our reference angle is in uh, quadrant three, and it's a measurement of 30 degrees. But that doesn't mean that theta, the actual angle, is 30 degrees, okay? It's just the reference from the x-axis is 30 degrees. So let's take a look at this concept in quadrant two. Here we have theta, but here we have theta reference. Let's say that this uh, reference angle here was also 30 degrees, okay? What we would have to do in order to get the actual measurement of um, this theta is subtract 30 degrees from 180, and our actual theta would be 150 degrees, okay? So that's that concept here. Let's also take a look at this qu concept in quadrant four. Let's say again, our reference angle was um, 30 degrees. What we would have to do is subtract 30 degrees from 360 degrees in order to get the actual measurement of theta and we would get a measurement of um, 330 degrees, okay? But we're actually dealing with quadrant three so the rule for finding the measurement of theta in quadrant three when you have your reference angle is to basically add the reference angle to 180 degrees. So the actual measurement of theta is 210 degrees, okay? And what I also want you to note is the, the measurement of um, the radius is always going to be positive because you're not dealing with an actual coordinate, you're dealing with a distance, a measurement. So the denominator is always going to be positive. But when you get to the X and Y values, they can either be positive or negative. Why? Because in quadrant one, both the X and Y values are positive. In quadrant two, the Y values are positive, but the X values are negative. Quadrant three, negative x values, negative y values in quadrant four, positive x values, negative um, y. So uh, depending on where you are in your Cartesian coordinate plane, that determines whether or not the cosine and the sine will be um, positive. Well, let's look here. For, sine, for cosine, we have negative x values. And for sine, we have negative um, y values. That means that we could automatically eliminate some answer. Actually, no, we can't yet. We can't yet because everything's negative, okay? But we can't eliminate answer choice three. You know why? Because you have to know the boundaries for the measurement of sine and cosine, and they can't 
they usually range between like negative one to one um or actually not even uh it just can't be that okay it's these values are too large they're outlandish they're not reasonable okay so and also what you need to do is for um common angles such as 30 degrees 60 degrees zero degrees 90 degrees as well as the quadrantal angles when i say quadrantal i mean the angles that bound each quadrant so zero degrees 90 degrees 270 um i mean 180 and 270 as well as some, sometimes 360 you need to know their trigonometric um values basically there are cosine and cosine values. This is something that you should memorize. So if you memorize the cosine of 30, you'll know that it's um, radical three over two, but since we're in quadrant three, the X value is going to be negative, making the entire cosine negative. Therefore, actually we can eliminate, just based on that knowledge alone, we can eliminate two other trans answer choices. Well, the cosine here is negative 1 over 2. That's wrong. And the cosine here is actually the cosine of 45 degrees. That's wrong as well. All right. And if you had also memorized the sine of 30 degrees, you would know that it's 1 half. But again, since we're in quadrant 3, it's going to be negative 1 half. Therefore, the correct answer choice is answer choice 1. Okay. Negative radical 3 over 2 negative one over two. Thanks for your time and don't forget to order the entire cram session and subscribe. Okay, so keep on watching, keep on learning. Good luck cramming, good luck studying.